presidency, Barack Obama made it a point to always bring the celebration of black music and artists to the White House. And unlike Pride Month, we see you, Trump White House, which is also in June, Black Music Month happened to be one of the designations that the Trump administration didn't snub. This month, the White House followed tradition and released a statement declaring June African American Music Month, signaling out the accomplishments of Chuck Berry, Ella Fitzgerald, and Dizzy Gillespie. But there's more to black music than White House designations. And for many artists, the industry can be more troublesome than triumphant. And here to discuss is somebody who's been heavily involved in the music industry for a very long time. Ooh. Yes, Rap Rehab founder Paul Porter. And he's the, he's the author of a new book, Blackout, by 40 years in the music business and a good friend and mentor of mine. Thank you, Thank you so much for being here. Thank good you to see you. Here, so let's talk about this. Uh, Blackout is a new book. Lots of people posting on social media for, uh, about it. The idea uh, of sort of celebrating black music often does negate the difficulty that black artists oh. face in just navigating it, right? Talk a bit about that. Uh, 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 Blackout, when I decided to do the book, we've lost so much over the years. Music was my passion growing up right in Jamaica, Queens. I, I mean, I learned a lot from music. And, and now we've went from lyricist to the lyrically challenged. And, and some of the problems is corporate. And corporations want quick fixes. The big days of music bands are over, and you know it's a world of little yachty now. Yeah. Well, how how much uh, has radio played? Uh, what, how much of a role has radio played in sort of uh, homogenizing and making it difficult oh, for black music to succeed? I mean, it, radio was it. You know, there's a chapter in there um, about pay for play and payola. Yep. And corporate radio, you know, you hear. You know, 20 years ago, you would hear the top 10 songs every four hours. Mm -hmm. Now you hear them every 60 minutes. Yep. Less variety. Mm -hmm. and, and pockets are being filled on all levels. And uh, it's hurting the music. Yeah. You, a lot of people uh, will remember you from BET. Uh, yeah, and the BET music days. television definitely played a role in sort of oh, the way yeah. that black music changed. I want to play a clip for you uh, from 1983. And this is BET's competitor, MTV. Yeah. And a point that the late David Bowie was making about the, the sort of respect that black music okay. has gotten over the years. I'm just floored by the fact that there's so many, so few black artists featured on it. Why is that? I think that we're trying to move in that direction. We want to play artists that seem to be doing music that fits into what we want to play for MTV. The only few black artists that one does see are on about 2.30 in the morning or, on, or to around 6. Very few are featured predominant, no. predominantly during the day. Mr. David Bowie, um, did, did, did music television overall help or, har or hurt black music? I, I think it helped for a while, given a lot of exposure. I remember being at BET in the 90s, and, you know, we were all music videos. Yeah. So, I mean, folks loved it. But as time changed, you know, the images changed and the content changed. Yeah. And we went from super bands and, and singers just to rap. And I love hip-hop. Yeah. I know you love hip-hop, yes, too. But, I do. you know, I, I, things that this have been homogenized a lot, man. Yeah. And I'm all about balance. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be able to empower kids by music. Is, is it legitimately true that a person can make a good living as a musical artist if you are not also a writer and producer? You can, but it's rare. Yeah. You know, that, and that's what I talk about in the book, that the odds, you know, we love Jay-Z and, and Bay, but yeah. they have one in a gazillion. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's really tough to be competitive in the music business without money. Yeah, absolutely. Paul Porter, my friend, thank you very much for being here. Uh, the book is Blackout, My 40 Years in the Music. Blackoutthebook.com. Blackoutthebook.com, and that's right. where you can check it out. And before All we right. go, I want to also say thank you to the African American Policy Forum, which is led by Professor Kimberly Crenshaw. My team and I attended their 20th anniversary gala last night, where I was honored to receive the George Curry Drum Major of Justice Award for Excellence in Journalism. Uh, the award is named for a pioneering civil rights and the pioneering civil rights and political journalist George Curry and thank you very much for that special honor that is our show for today be sure to join us next weekend for more AM Joy in the meantime keep it right here on MSNBC